I thought I'd do a little bit of a chatty get ready with me kind of thing, even though I'm kind of semi ready already. Sorry, I thought I heard my dog making a weird noise. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought I'd have a bit of a kind of cat-like life update and catch up whilst I'm just finishing off my makeup. So first of all, you guys know I'm an absolute lash addict, but here we are, no lashes. So I thought I would try something a little bit different. I'm always on the hunt for good beauty products and I've had such an issue with my lashes. Well, the reason why I'm such a lash obsessive is because my own eyelashes are naturally like so straight. I'm looking upwards at the minute so they kind of look more upwards, but they're so straight they often go downwards. So I've been using Swede. So their mascara is award winning and it has basically sold out so many times, but also they have got their eyelash growth serum. So let me show you how it works. You just basically apply it to the lash line to help your lashes grow. I either do this in the evening or in the morning, or basically when I'm doing my makeup. So it's just easier doing it all in one go, like whether I'm doing my skincare or my makeup. Then they've got their cold pencils, which are so good. So I just did the upper eyeline there, but their Pro Lash Lift Mascara, oh my God, I have never ever had a mascara like this before. Like, can you see how well that lifts my lashes and coats them. It's vegan and cruelty free as well, which is obviously amazing. They also do loads of really gorgeous false lashes as well. Like insanely beauty, like beautiful high quality ones. But then the mascara is literally so good. Like how good is that? Can we just appreciate how amazing? I'm really tempted to put on some of their little individual lashes as well because they do these little individuals and they also do these little clusters and I really quite like the fox eye look. So I really quite like to just add a few lengthening ones there. So I might have a little bit of a go with that. I've got a discount code for you guys. So I thought I would share that below if you're interested. It's only running for a couple of days, I believe. So we've got to act quick. And also this has sold out a couple of times before and I think they won an award and it got called the mascara of the decade. So in regards to having a little bit of a catch up about things. So one of the things that I've been asked quite a bit is, are you still with your boyfriend? Have you and Jimmy broke up? Things like that, like what's going on with you two? Where are you at? What's the situation? And I like, we were living together during lockdown. He came over here from New Zealand and, well, Australia. So he's from New Zealand and he works in Australia. And obviously with everything because of COVID, their travel rules are so strict and they have very, very insane quarantines going to their countries. It's why they managed to keep the rates so low. But yeah, so basically the way it's kind of worked out was he came over here to look into finding a job and moving here permanently. And then we went into complete lockdown. So he was here for all of lockdown and was quite like, was unable to get a job whilst he was over here because of everything going on. And it got to a point where he was like, I need to go back and see my friends and my family. We spent all of lockdown sitting here in the UK doing nothing whilst all of his friends back in Australia and New Zealand were going to music festivals, going to bars, going to weddings, having like a normal life. And I think it really got to him. So he was like, in the beginning of April, he flew back because he really wanted to see everyone. So that's kind of where we are now at the moment. We're still together. We're planning, because he stayed here too long on a tourist visa. I think it was just, it, he peaked the six months that he's allowed. He can't, I don't think he can come back to the country for a while. So I'm gonna have to leave and be overseas with him, go abroad for like a couple months and stay somewhere. It won't be Australia or New Zealand because their quarantine rules are so strict. And I've had a lot of questions about long distance during COVID. Honestly, I wish I could actually give some proper advice but it's hard, like it's really difficult. I know people who have stayed apart from their partners for so long and it's so sad and like, it's really hard. But I think the one thing that I've noticed, obviously it just seems so boring and blase being like, make sure you do video calls because everyone knows that. But the difference I really find is 
you really need to be present, like actually looking at each other's faces. Because Jimmy would call me when he'd finished doing the night shift and he'd be in his room and it'd be dark, he'd be going to bed. And it would be so dark that I wouldn't be able to see anything apart from, well, nothing. It would be on FaceTime and I'd be able to see my face, not his. And I just, because I couldn't see him but I could hear him, it was like just having him on the loudspeaker and I just got really disconnected from him and our phone conversations and I was just a bit like, hmm bored and would end up doing other things on my phone instead and as soon as he started sort of turning the light on and having the light on when we were talking it was hugely different like it just changed the game when we were talking on the phone so I think you really need to be present and you need to not have any distractions when doing long distance I think trying to make some form of plan always helps I know that Jimmy's applying for his UK visa to work here officially and I also know that we're planning to spend two months together in the future so having those plans in place really does help but yeah that's the only real advice that I can offer I feel that like I think like for me as my as, I can't believe I'm saying this online I have said this to him in person but I will feel like it's like opening up but I like honestly I don't like I'm turning 30 soon and whilst I don't want to have children and I don't, I'm not really that fussed about getting married, I, I did get to the point where I was like, Jimmy, I'm not going to be allowed into your countries, either Australia or New Zealand for a long time and it's not going to be easy for us to travel to and from to see each other. I can't leave everything to relocate over there, especially not now, so it's on you. Like, you're the one who's going to have to move. You're the one who's going to have to make that that judgment. And if he had turned around and said no, or if there was no way that we could see our, a way out of this, like, it would really have me questioning where this relationship is going. And I said that. I was like, look, I don't want to spend the next two years of my life seeing you for four months at a time and then not seeing you for the remaining however many months of the year because you can't travel back and forth and I can't travel to see you. So I do think it's so tough. Like, I, of course I understand the travel restrictions and why they're in place. However, it's just so sad for families and couples being kept apart. I just yeah it really is so i really feel for people in this situation as well okay other people wanted to ask about see i get so passionate when i'm talking i just forget to actually do my makeup um <laughs> so other people have asked my teeth is there any maintenance to like to what i've had done and how do i keep it up so for my teeth if you've been here for a while or you go through my old videos my teeth change quite a bit uh, well, along with the rest of my face and my hair and everything else. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I had composite bonding done on my teeth. And honestly, the best thing that I've ever done. So I originally had braces. I had a lingual brace at the back of my top teeth. And then a train track brace on my bottom. That straightened my teeth up quite a lot. But I really wasn't happy with the result. Like, it cost so much money. And I was not happy. I don't feel like my teeth were straight enough and I felt like for the price I was paying I should have had some form of like finishing treatment like a bit of teeth contouring to kind of like get certain ones in line because some weren't totally in line so that was that um then I had them contoured elsewhere so that was like a further 500 pounds I had having them like contoured and shaped to a better shape and then I still wasn't happy and I went to see Dr. Rona Eskanda, who is incredible. You may have seen her on Dragon's Den. And I had composite bonding and that's where they just add like this bonding to your teeth basically to what I had done. You can see here, these weren't so perfectly shaped. There was a few more like gaps. The gaps were more pronounced between my teeth. So they elongated these teeth to kind of just give a more broader more consistent and sort of just straight smile so yeah I, like honestly made me so happy in terms of maintenance yes like i was told that i need to go in every three months to have my maintenance checkup on my bonding to make sure everything's all good have them polished and clean so they don't get any stains because they can be prone to staining more so than like your own teeth might be a lot of people 
a lot of people's dentists didn't, haven't told them this, although I don't know if they've thought that this was entirely necessary, but I was told that it's basically the same as having like a gel manicure or something, but for your teeth, like you have to go back and get that maintained in order for it to look good. And you know what, like it could chip, but then that can get fixed and rectified, but it's, it's like any cosmetic sort of thing, it involves maintenance of some sort. Now I've had this for a while now, not a year, but I think maybe coming up, maybe coming up to a year. Mm, nine months. No, probably, yeah, probably like a year. And I haven't had any issues whatsoever, apart from I have nightmares that my teeth get fucked up and I'm like desperately trying to get to see Dr. Rona and she only has a booking for me in like three months time and I'm there with half a tooth. So yeah, apart from the nightmares, I have had no issues. It can be expensive. I know Dr. Rona charges 540 per tooth and I had the front six done. The front six is a very normal thing to have done so yeah it's so worth it though okay someone asked me to talk about the chanel price increase so for people who don't know chanel is rumored to have gone up with their prices the first of july i don't know where i did that that's two this is one so first of july the rumor of the price like price increase like some of them are rumored to be going up by like a grand like a thousand pounds which is insane but they did an original price increase I, increase, I think, in January, and at the moment they seem to be doing two a year. So I think the thing with this is, I understand why they're doing it for two reasons. It's the exclusivity and the att attainability of it. As, as things, as people start to earn more money, and you know, they have to kind of like increase it to sort of retain that level of exclusivity. And oh my god, I'm going to buy a Chanel. <gasps> this is a big investment oh my god oh my god not just like it has to seem special but also i've been told by multiple people that the cost of raw materials is increasing so much it's skyrocketed because the supply is so low so you know low supply skyrocketing prices for raw materials which means these bags are going to cost more to make they're costing the supplier so much more and also there's the element of the fact that the, the argument is that the quality is not as good nowadays as a vintage one i've got two vintage bags and they're really old they're really quite old they're like nearly 30 years old each of them and they are well worn i just i can't really t i mean i can tell from a very pristine vintage chanel bag like say a classic flat that i've seen from like the 90s which has never been used compared to a modern one one of mine which i haven't really worn very much you can tell the vintage one is higher quality the leather feels so much nicer whereas the modern leather feels a bit more plasticky um i'm still a huge fan of chanel and i just feel really frustrated because like <sighs> I know a lot of people who've been saving for a Chanel bag for a long time, because I, I saved for mine for a long, first one for a long time, and then the rest were just stupid investments, um, uh, which actually may come in hand, come in my favour when the resale market certainly booms again after this. But I do feel bad for people because a lot of people I know have been saving for a long time, and they just think, you know, when they're almost there, then they push the prices up. And then they're like, oh, okay, keep saving, keep saving. Oh my God, I'm nearly there. Chanel pushes the prices up. And it just makes it constantly, constantly unattainable for so many people. And I think it's really, really, really sad. So I would definitely encourage people to look to buy vintage. Because at the moment, I feel like the price is obviously going to be much more value for money. But another thing I would say, what was I going to say about vintage? Oh, that's it. So I, I understand I do understand the fact that there is something about buying a brand new Chanel bag. I know that because I feel it when I go to the shop. It's like, oh my god, oh this is so exciting and they wrap it up in the box and it's just the unboxing of it, the experience of it, it's like being in a luxury store, like I love it. I love doing all of that. And I feel, I feel like everyone should definitely have that experience because there is something so special about it and you don't get that from when buying vintage Chanel. But the thing you get from vintage Chanel is this history in that bag. That bag has had a story 
and you might not know that story but sometimes it's nice to sort of like make it up in your head and think like oh some rich Parisian woman was bought this by her lover and blah blah blah, blah. I don't know like it's just fun it's fun and I think it's it's nice to have a bag that's like it kind of exactly the same as it was 30 years ago as it is now you know like these bags are iconic and they always will be so I think that's something nice about having like one of the more original versions of a Chanel bag especially when it comes to like the classic flap which is like the most popular style I think but yeah anyway um sorry it was a real like ramble and a rant and I have to rush out now so I just thought it'd be nice to come in and check up with a few of you guys and um just have a chat about a few things and if you like this kind of video maybe i'll do it a little bit more and have a chat about other things and stuff whilst i'm getting ready although i honestly don't think i could ever do a full get chatty get ready with me properly because i don't think i'll ever be able to get ready properly <laughs> i'll get too distracted so yeah anyway <sighs> Thanks for watching and please do subscribe to my channel and make sure you follow me on Instagram below. My handle has changed from what it used to be. It's at It's Sophie Milner. And yeah, uh, peace out. Goodbye.